and welcome back to the channel again. Um, this video we're going to be doing the wiring. Not sure what episode this is because they keep all getting mixed up. Um, I've got a full RS loom on the floor here that I bought for my mate that's actually out of an Australian car because I've got no idea where the loom is for this one. Like I said it was in storage for like 20 years and a load of bits went missing. Um, my brother is an auto electrician so it's mainly going to be my brother doing it and him teaching me along the way. Originally, I was going to completely lose the stalks around the column, um, but I've decided against it. I'm going to keep the stalks on because it's going to make it a lot easier to rewire, and I'm just going to have um, like push switches. So, probably I'll have hazards, ignition, fuel pump, and start. Um, everything else will obviously still be on the stalks. I'm going to wire tuck the bay completely. I'm also going to try and hide all the wiring in, in the car and all around the back of the car. Um, I think we're probably going to replicate the parts we need out of the loom because I'm not running the standard heater box, so I'm, I'm not going to need that bit of the loom. I've not got an interior light. Um, there's a, just a few things, obviously, that I haven't got. Um, also, the original RS loom still has the full Pinto loom on it, so I'm not going to be using none of that because I'm using the ME4 442 and they've made me a Juratech loom from scratch um, and it also integrates with my aim dash so first things first is I've labeled the loom up um, these clips are probably going to be really mixed up again because I'm doing bits here and there with the loom uh, I'm ordering bits and so th these are probably weeks apart but yeah let's crack on anyway right so the first thing I've done is I've got the loom on the floor and my neighbor Mr Pink once again cheers for coming over um, helps me try and identify most of the plugs so I'll run through quickly most of what I've got here so obviously we've got the heater box that's the heater box plug wiper motor plug is here um, a lot of this is engine loom and just loom that's not going to be used uh, pretty sure this is headlight yep that's passenger headlight that's driver's headlight a lot of this is engine loom again. Uh, it's a bit all muddled up at the minute. What's this? Driver's rear light. Uh, the front and the back loom actually separates into two pieces. Uh, here we go. So this is the rear loom. So that'll have the rear lights, the heated rear screen, which I'm not using, the original fuel sender. Uh, that's actually a plug that connects the front of the loom to the back of the loom. Uh, I don't know where the plug is on the other loom, but yeah. Reverse light. Yeah, so that's separated. A lot of this loom I probably will reuse. I'm just gonna rewrap it, um, check for any nicks in it and all that. To be honest, it's actually pretty good condition loom. So that won't need too much work apart from extending and rewrapping. As I said, so this is the front of the loom again. Um, so I plugged my indicator stalks in on the floor so I don't know where they are they're the original clock looms which I'm going to cut out because I'm using my aim dash which you'll see possibly later on in this video uh, what's this heater control and just loads of unused and unused and more unused and what's this this is Oh, this is the original fuse box. I'm going to be using some fuse boxes of Amazon that I used on my truck. I'm pretty sure they're 12 way, but they've got like a little red LED. So when they blow, you know, it fuse it straight away instead of trying to go through every single one. So they're pretty good. So before I actually put the loom in the car, what I'm going to do is mount my battery and I'll show you what battery I've got here. The battery I'm using is an Od 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 Odyssey Extreme P680. Um, again, this is what my brother recommended. Tell like, actually, a lot of people on a lot of track forums recommended this. Said it's totally fine for a Duratec and an ST150, um, Fiesta ST150. So my car's running a lot less electric, so it should it should be all right. And my brother said the cranking amperage is good enough anyway. But it weighs I think here it says here oh, seven kilos, so it's not bad at all. Really, it's about half the weight of a normal battery. Um, screw terminals, but I've also got these 
which are just like extenders, which I don't know if I'm going to use yet. Once I mount the battery, I'll work that out. And a case for it. Um, I got this off eBay second hand. I got it quite cheap. I just paid 85 quid, I think. Just the case and the, t the extended terminals on their own are about 50 or 60 quid, and the battery itself is like 110. Um, the geezer barely used it, so yeah, I had a touch with that one. But I'm going to mount that first, and then we'll crack on and put the loom in the car, see what goes where. Right, so after probably about half hour of messing around, I've decided where I want to put it. I'm going to put it behind the passenger rear seat. Um, I know it's meant to be better for weight distribution because you've got a driver and all that. And to be honest, um, I don't really want to run a big cable all the way to the boot. And it looks a bit ugly in the boot as well because I've got all the carbon going on in the boot and the, and the uh, all the nice fuel lines and that. So I don't really want to do that. So I think I've decided with it here. Uh, the only problem with this is a bit hard to see. You see down there a little bit. It actually lifts up off the floor. Um, I'm going to put it in with rib nuts, one down here and then one higher up. If that's not secure enough, I'm going to put a couple rib nuts in the floor and then just space up um, just to make it more secure. So, yeah, let's drill some holes and we'll get some rib nuts in. In place with a new mount, a uh, cage even. Uh, we'll probably powder coat this black. It, it's pretty secure. I mean, I've really got to give it some to make it move. Um, I've also slid a bit of foam down the back in between the battery and the body. Um, I might pop another couple up the top just, just to make it proper secure. Right, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick run through of the ECU I'm using, the dash I'm using, uh, what bits I've got, etc, etc. I've got to say a big shout out to Motorsport Electronics who have done me like a semi-sponsorship, sorted me out a nice deal on the bits that I'm using. There's their banner they sent me. I'm using an ME442 ECU with a plug and play Duratec harness and I'm using an AIM Strada 1.2 dash, I think it is. Um, my mate George is going to 3D print me a dash around the same as the reservoirs if you watch my previous videos. It'll be in the same stuff, the nylon stuff. He's getting that done now. Um, as I'm recording this, I think it's a Wednesday and he said it is going to be done on a Thursday. So fingers crossed the first one, the prototype goes in all nicely. Right, so here we've got the ME442 ECU. This comes with a pre map for my bodies. Um, it's just basically a base map to get me running and up to the dyno. I'm not sure if I can drive it, if I can drive to the dyno on that map if it's safe enough. I'm probably not gonna, I'm probably gonna trailer it there. Um, I've also got a lamp sensor here to come with. I'm pretty sure this is connected to a laptop. This again is, oh, USB to serial adapter. Not even sure what that does. I've also got from them um, a Bosch two-in-one sensor. So this is a sensor for my oil pressure and my oil temp that, that obviously goes into one, which is very useful so I haven't got to tap into the block. Just want to show you the other delivery I've had from Car Builder Solutions, which I've ordered all of my switches from uh, my battery cable, my earth cable. I'm not going to show you that, but I'm going to show you my switches and the other bits I've got. Yeah, so first I've got the little USB cover. I'm actually going to pop this where the choke used to be on my car, because obviously I'm not going to be running a choke anymore, and it's got the little cover, so it's nice and discreet. But I think everyone needs one of these in their cars. I don't want to be driving along and have no phone battery. These are all my switches. Um, they're white LED, some are latching, some are non-latching. I've got hazard, I've got ECU, I've got fuel pump, I've got a couple of blank ones. I'll show you one here. So these are the hazard, this hazard's one's latching. They're quite nice. Little lock nut on the back, and they're illuminating. So these are obviously going to be run where the normal heater control panel would be. I've also got one for the heater. When I get them all out, I will show you all of them. Right, so Julian's helping me make a little panel for the dash for my switches that you would have seen in the previous clip. So we're going to get that done and then I'll come back to it. Panel and the switches rested in place, ready for my brother. Big thanks to Julian for helping me out with this one because I am no good at cutting and measuring and he is. 
Um, we've got start here. This one probably be ignition. This one probably be fuel pump or the other way around. Uh, this one here is going to be my little heater, and I've got a little small two kilo heater, and then we've got the hazards. The reason I've put them over there is because these are going to be the buttons I use the most. These are going to be the buttons I use the least. Um, also, I've got a couple of rivnuts behind here, and as usual, I've used the spread washers. Now the battery and everything's in place, the first thing we're going to do is the live and the earth. The battery's got little M6 nuts or bolts on it, sorry. Um, we're probably going to run it down the seal here and out to the engine. We're going to run the live with the earth. Cut the live cable so it goes from the battery to the starter motor, starter motor to the alternator. Now we're going to crimp them. We've got 25mm cable and obviously I've got the M6 crimps. That's the first one done. Alright, so that's that one done. That's the cables roughly run. So we're going to take them back out and put the braid on it. That's the braid done. Now we're just going to peek it into place. Right, that's it all okay. peak clipped in. Now I'm going to do the rest of the engine bay. Engine bay side done. I'm not going to bolt it on yet because I need to get a grommet. That's the standard wiring grommet in place. So I'm going to connect the alternator up, do the, sorry, start motor up, then we'll do the starter motor to alternate wire. And then my brother's on his way over to do some more wiring today, hopefully, try and get most of his engine room plugged in. I was messing around with the wiring, got well, the injector plugs all done. Uh, I'm waiting for a different plug for the TPS. I'm waiting for a different plug for the crank sensor, cam sensor's done. Not sure what I'm going to do with the water temp because my water temp is all the way down there and I'm, I'm not going to get a sensor on it so I might just put an inline one in here. Air temp sensor, I need to make a little mount for that for the, on the bodies. Um, and then we're going to re extend all the injectors because I don't want them running over the top. I'm going to run them all underneath and spread them out. I think I've already shown um, the cable from the battery to the alternator. No, sorry, battery from the cable to the starter. Now I've got to go from the starter to the alternator and I want to hide it as best as I can. I'm still using the black braided sheath, sheath, whatever you want to call it, um, on all the loom so it's nice and hidden. But I'll show you how I've rooted it so far. It's very hard to see because I've got the bodies back on at a minute to size stuff up. But we come in here, off here, I've got a P-clip in here. Then we're running straight under the fuel regulator we've gone down here i haven't done it yet but i will be pinning it all under here all under here i'm going to come back out here and come straight into the alternator um this is it in place just sized up i'm now going to put a bit of protection over it i got this from talks uk it's uh heat proof i think it's good for up to 250 degrees because you can't see right now but my manifold is extremely close to the alternator so i just want to make sure my cables are protected i think it, it literally comes about here so while my manifold is off getting a lambda boss welded in it i just wanted to get this done um once that's done i'll come back and i'll show you how i've actually run it underneath the car as well i was only going to use the heat wrap on this part here but i actually decided to use it the whole way along just to try and keep it a little bit protected in all weathers um I'll show you what I can, it's a bit hard because the lighting's not great. So it drops back out the rail here. Peek it, peek it, peek it, peek it. Ugh. And I've actually had to do a little loop here because um, this was a little bit too long and it was all coming out here. I didn't want it too close to the manifold, so I thought I'd loop it here. And then we go straight up to the alternator. So it's nice and tight and it should be out of the way of the manifold. So while I'm doing the engine bay loom, I'm gonna run my fuel pump loom as well. Fuel pumps here, earth and positive or whatever. The original loom for the car runs all along here. That's it down there. But what I'm gonna do is actually hide everything up in here. So I'm gonna do my two wires, I'm gonna come under here, I'm gonna tie it into here and then rewrap the whole loom in the black braid that I've been using before. And that's the fuel pump side done. It's all nice and tucked up, hidden under the reservoirs. 
I will probably put a P clip here and we'll go up and under here to connect with the actual rear loom. So part of the engine loom, I had to take the manifold off, which I didn't show. But I had to take it off to get a boss sender welded in. So I can run a lambda. Also, something else I didn't bother recording because it's just me drilling four holes is my little heater. It's from Demon Tweaks. I can't remember the power outage, but if I find it online, I will post it up. Um, it's 1.8 kilos, so that's pretty light. And also, I've mounted my ECU oh, all the way over here. Uh, I've used some of the original loom clips. George is over now, so we can make a mount here for the fuse board and relay board. We're going to use these two holes here, and also going to double up on the wiper motor mount. So it'll be nice and hidden up here, but it'll also be pretty easy to see if a fuse blows or a relay blows up, it's still pretty easy to get to. Right, so George is over, doing some more 3D printing, scanning, designing, whatever you want to call it, for these two, the relay box and the fuse box. He's done a drawing on, is it CAD? He's done a drawing on CAD. This is gonna mount underneath the dash between where the old heater box would have mounted and the wiper motor. He took all the measurements, designed it all, and what are you printing it in? I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, pretty Something strong enough, but obviously it hasn't got to be that strong because it's not taking any weight. Onto another part of the loom. Um, I'm obviously not using the original bo uh, fuse box that goes in the engine bay. Um, we're going to upgrade it to one of these new ones. I think they're only like 20 quid off Amazon. I had one on my truck and it worked really well. The LEDs light up when a fuse is blown, so they're really easy to work with. And I've also got a little relay box as well, which has got four relays in it, which should be enough. I've got a couple of my ECU that I'm probably just gonna cable type out of the way. Thanks to George again, because he's printed me a really cool fuse board and relay board mount. So this is instead of having it in alley, this is actually carbon fiber inlay with a really thin bit of plastic over the top. I can't exactly remember what material it was that he told me it was, but it's really light. And it saves me getting someone to bend me up some metal and things like that. So they will sit like this. They're gonna go under the bay, uh, sorry, under the dash. It's gonna go, this bolt here actually shares with the wiper motor mount. And these two here, are for where the original heater box used to be because I'm running the little demon demon tweak small heater I don't need to use them holes obviously because I'm not using that heater um, I wanted to bolt it all in but these are M4 I've got M4 bolts but I haven't got any M4 nuts so I'm probably gonna get that all in bolt that up and I'll show you what it's like after and this is the bracket that George made us it's sharing with the wiper motor and where the old heater heater box used to go obviously i'm using the little demon tweak small one so i don't actually need these holes um it's pretty secure i haven't actually got the board on it at the minute because i need to get some m4 nuts pretty much it for the full engine loom this took a while to do because it just takes ages to try and make like to try and resleeve everything and make it look nice i think in the next video i will probably Get on doing the dash and some of the actual car loom because i'm going to be using a new like modern uh fuse board and relay board which you will see earlier in this video probably the little mount we made it's going to be it for this video i'm not sure how long it's going to be but i'm probably gonna have wiring in at least two or three different bits because it's a long-winded thing as always thank you to julian mr pink they would come over help me with parts and things like that and knowledge Thank you to everyone who's been ordering on the website. As usual, I'll leave the link to the website, the group, and the page in the description below. Thanks for watching.